another way of doing um, a test is to perform a heat cooling reheat. Uh, this is good for, you can tell it very um, uh, different things. Like on the first heat, if you want to know what you've done to a polymer, um, say you extruded it differently or you held it below its glass transition temperature or you held it above its glass transition, and you want to see what that does to the sample or you anneal it or quench it or whatever, you want that first glass transition temperature, you want to know what that number is or what that melt is. After you cool it, you are cooling it at a constant rate, so you're going to have a known history for your cooling curve, and your second heat will be a function of the material with a known thermal history. So that is, this is, you'll get two different numbers for this one and this one. This should be your original material number, and this is what you've done to the material. Unless you say, like on this one, if you want to get rid of a, if you built in stress in your sample, which happens a lot. Um, you can go up to just below the glass transition, stay below, the, just let the um, material relax a little bit, and then go back down and come back up. But those are some considerations you gotta, gotta make before running the test. Glass transition is reversible, and glass transition is taken over a representative of the temperature range for which the transition takes place. Here's some common polymer references. Something like a polycarbonate is a glass transition. TG stands for glass transition. TM stands for melting. Polycarbonate has glass transition between 140 and 150, and there's nothing on the TM, no melting. Um, the DSC is just great in accompanying with the FTIR. Say you know that a sample is polypropylene, but you don't know whether it's a homopolymer or copolymer. The cold polymer of polypropylene has a small density peak at 720 on the um, TIR, and it's hard to see if there's any inorganics in the material. So with the uh, DSC, you can tell for sure whether you have a polypropylene or a cold polymer. The same is true for the delvins. Um, the acetyls right here, the delvin is the homopolymer, and the selcon is the copolymer. Also, absolutely a great way to tell the difference. I think I changed this, so if you'd like to change that on your slide, um, the wrong numbers were there to start with. Another sample that's very good, uh, we've done nylons a lot. You can tell the difference by FTIR, but it's much easier to see the difference of 30 degrees uh, on the uh, PSC. And um, what's the other one? Oh, low density, high density, and linear low density are also nice if the materials are not blended. If they're blended, uh, you, you got to go the other way. But if they're homopolymers, then this is a nice, easy way to tell the difference. This is a um, DSC curve, or a curve for the DSC. This portion right here is the glass transition. This 153.28 represents the onset temperature. The midpoint is 162.57, and the recovery is 172.18. This little letter behind here stands for what method you use for calculating. We have the um, companies give you quite a few choices. I know that this is considered, this is by half height, because it has an H behind it. If it has an I behind it, it's inflection. Uh, e behind it is extrapolated, and a W is half width. Um, by doing this by different methods, you can have as much as four to five degrees of temperature difference. So you really need to know which, um, which one you're using here, and if you're comparing it to somebody else, which one you're using. Usually when you look at data, uh, like that, and references that I just showed you, they don't say anything. So it's one of those things, you gotta know what you're doing. Here's a melt. This particular, the heat effusion for this sample is 42.39 joules per gram, and that's the area underneath this curve. This is some blend analysis we did. Um, with this sample, we wanted to know if we had these two blended together in a 50-50 ratio, how we could get a quantitative number to use for our specification. This is one of the parents, this is the other parent. This one, the low density portion of it is at 108. This is at 121. This is the linear low density, but you can see here there is a component of low density also in this blend. So what you have to do is make a blend of known um, amounts of these two. <coughs> so this one here is a, uh, 70% uh, low density, and this one here is 
go against you. And you can see how this changes. We also ran a 50%. So what you do is that you, if you have to run second heats on this, you have to have a known thermal history to get a try this. You integrate this whole peak across here, and then you drop a perpendicular down between the low density and the linear low density. And you take this heat diffusion and use it in your calculations. So you take your one that was at 100%, the 70-30, the 50-50, and the 30-70. Um, this is the number ordered pairs. We do regression on it. We got a line of 0.9944, which is not too bad. And so if you know, if you run a sample um, and you get 16.84 joules per gram, that equates to 41.71% linear low density. And same with uh, that 20 you'll get a 52. So you're going to be on to be about 19 joules per gram to get a 50% blend. Here's a glass transition. We run this material for one of our um, customers out back. Um, we worked with them. They worked with us. We, get, uh, we know that we have to have a glass transition around 93 degrees. So what we do is periodically all day long we monitor the uh, glass transition and make sure it stays in the range. This is some rubber cures. This is an exotherm. This is the rubber curing, a silicone rubber. Um, this customer asked us to run it um, uncured, and then they were supposed to have cured the material, and we ran it again. As you can see, there was still some uncured material in this sample, and the uh, curing was the exotherm here. So they cured it once more, and now you have a flat line, meaning that everything is cured. Here's some oxidation induction. This was a board about three quarters inch thick. Um, this is an ASTM, <coughs> I don't remember what the number is, it's a polyethylene procedure for doing oxidation induction. What you do is you um, ramp a sample up to 200 degrees in, um, or in air or oxygen. For this particular one, we did an oxygen. Once you get to temperature, you start the oxygen. You don't do it before. You, you ramp them up in nitrogen and then you flip over to oxygen. This particular sample was uh, outdoors for three months, and they wanted to know the difference between the inside of the board and the outside of the board. So we took a piece out of the inside of the board, uh, a certain thickness that matched the certain thickness that we took on the outside of the board. And on this particular sample, on the inside, it takes 89 minutes for the sample to start to degrade, which is this direction on uh, oxidation. Uh, the material on the outside of the board is only taking nine minutes for the material to start to degrade. Um, what we thought we could do with this is eventually cut it off into many slabs 